Hi, another update about the hatches feature that's been introduced to Affinity 3. Since doing the video last, I found a few more things from comments that people said, you can find hatches in the swatches panel. And yes, you can. Where's the swatches panel? Go to window and then down to general and swatches. So what are hatches? Well, you can see it here on the screen. They're lines and you can apply it to the fill and also to the stroke. And this video, I'm going to show you apply to the stroke as well as the fill as well. So let's just go through now with the swatches and I can just click here and apply it to any shape that I've got selected. So at the moment, obviously I've got an ellipse. I could just go and go for a more standard design, like a rectangle, something like that. Simply just go here, see hatches just there and Affinity 3, they've added a load of great presets. And you can just click there. Now, some of them actually require a little bit of a change. So if you click this one, you can see that. Click that one, you can see that. And some of them just end up showing that, which is not great. My apologies, there's some fireworks going at the moment. But still, what you can do is you can change these settings. And how to do that? You need to go here. Just go here to the fill tool. So once you've got the fill tool and you've got this context tool toolbar here, you can find that in the view and context toolbar and show. Of course, if you go do that, you don't show it. So let's just show it. There it is. It's always the way. It disappears when you don't want it. To. But you'll notice you've got a scaling feature. And the reason for not seeing any result here is the scaling. So you have to change it. So you just manually change it. So let's just change it. And you can see now, as I change it, say to 40, you can then see the result. And it sort of looks like the view here. And you can just change it obviously all the way down and you can push it all the way up again. So you can vary it in numerous ways. And this is for the current hatch. You can also modify this hatch as well. So if you want to, you can just go here, just click here and you've got the hatch pattern and you can see how it's made up. So you've got settings here, the various things such as spacing, which you can modify. Let's just quickly modify that. And you can see as I modify the spacing, it changes. Also, you'll see the reason you've got this gap is because you've got here the settings here, the dash and space. That's how it works. Well, let's just go back and select another one. So if I select that one, you can select that one. So now you can actually see them. So if you've got the wrong set in there, you probably find you can't see them. However, say you just don't want the black one there. You've got black, white and black. Well, you can just change it here. As long as again, you've got the fill tool selected, you can go over here and hatch fill color and you just change it to say red. And you can also click here and maybe go to say blue for the stroke. And you can see you've got that design. What if you want to add it to your swatches panel? Well, you can. You can now, if you go up here, it makes sense. You've got the move tool selected. Move tool selected. You can now go up here and you can just click here. Add current field to palette. And you can see now it's been added. You can also do some other changes. So let's just gain, go back here to the field tool. So again, it's using exactly the same shape that was selected before. And I can click here and now this is the fill for this, the red. I can now go here and set it to no fill at all. So you've just got those lines in there. And you, what you can do, you can see you've got here, you've got the settings here for line weight. So you can just change it. So you might want to, you know, just push it up there. So you've got these blue lines. So you can make lots of variations from just this basic set of swatches over here. And again, exactly the same, go to the move tool, select that. Once that's selected, you can then again, just go over here and add current fill and you can just click there and you can see it there. It's not very clear because of course it's got a gray background and the blue is very faint on that, but it is there. So it's been saved and you can then just sort of go click here and apply it. Well, <laughs> you think you're good, but it doesn't seem to work that way. So let's just go back to here, the fill tool selected, make certain that's selected, and then click. And you can see there does seem to be some slight issue here. Now it doesn't change the color. 
still got the blue there, not the original black. There is seem to be a slight issue. However, please put in the comments below if you found similar sort of things. But I did mention you can also apply a stroke with the hatch as well. And you can do it. It does seem to have a mind of its own, a bit like this, where it doesn't seem to work particularly well. So I've got here, hit this selected, and I can just go down here now, you've got the rectangle, and you can see you've got here the width. So let's just click there, and then you can increase that. And you can see as I do that, you've got 30. So just click here, and you've got hatch patterns again. However, it doesn't seem to exactly work if you just click there. Not certain why, just doesn't, ignores it. But you have got these, the swatches. So with the swatches, what you need to do is just go over here, make certain you've got this selected, the fill tool. So fill tool selected, go down here and again, the context, which you have there, you can go to fill, you can just set it to swatch, a stroke, I should say. What I'm going to do now is actually apply the swatches. So exactly the same, just click here. And now you can see you've got it applied there. And you can go through this. It suffers from exactly the same thing as before, that you'll notice that here you can't see anything. Well, again, fill tool there selected, you can just vary this and make certain again, you go back to stroke because this is the trouble, it, it resets itself. Whenever you go back to it, it changes to fill. It always goes back to fill. I find that a very annoying feature, but that's what it does. So always go and just set it to stroke. And now what you can do, you can see the setting is 2,540, which is crazy. So you can just click there and you can reduce it down and reduce it down and you can see something starting to appear. Yes, we've got the lines in and you can now see that the stroke and hatch is applied correctly. So you have to set it to 11% and not 2,450 or whatever it is. <laughs> it's a bit odd, but that's what it seems to do when you do it. You do need to make certain this is set. And also you can scale it and also modify the settings again, just change there if you want to make it a bit thicker there. Again, vary this if you want to do that. And you can see then change the rotation again, it's for the stroke. So you can create a whole range of different designs. So it does work. It just seems to have a bit of a slight quirky way of working. Well, I hope you found this update about the hatch feature of use and please put in the comments below have you found other things you think really great with it or different issues where it just doesn't seem to work or whatever with that hatch because I think it's a great feature there is also another feature before I finish let's just go to this and this is the fill you'll notice there's a bake appearance now because I've got this one without any sort of obviously there's transparency which is great what you can do is you can click bake appearance. So just click bake appearance. And now what you get is you get lots of lines to work with. <laughs> it's great, which I really like. So if you just go over here, you can see you've got this group and lines and you can manipulate it. So you can just go over here and just go no tool and you can see you get this. You get lots and lots of points to work with. And you of course can just, let's just drag down now to want to do something anyway and you can just manipulate it. So you can, of course, just, oh, no, nope, don't want to do that. Just Now, that's one thing it always slightly, what's the name, it just goes. Oh, I want to get that back. Let's just go back to the no tool and lines. Yeah, want to select it. It's always slightly annoying. If it just suddenly goes, you try and get it back again. It's not always straightforward, but there it is. So it's selected. And you can, of course, then create something slightly more interesting than just straight lines. You can create sort of a weaving or whatever, a wavy kind of background. And again, you select some more or maybe some of them. And again, you can see you could just keep trying variations and perhaps you could even go and change the color. Uh, just go down here and let's go for, oh, change the whole thing. Yes, it's all one single thing. You can't change the individuals. You probably can break it down even further. And maybe that's for another video, but you can see that you can create some quite interesting designs using this approach. Hope you found this of interest. Bye.